Do you want to record your MG300 but you don't know where to start? Well stay tuned because the next few minutes I'm going to show you how to do it. Hey there, it's Scott at the Pedal Guy. How you doing? Well, we're all about pedal demos, pedal knowledge, and pedal sales. I love pedals, and so do you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up your new X MG300 to work in any DAW of your choosing. Now, in this video, I'm going to be using Reaper, but anything that I show you here will be applicable to no matter what DAW you use. Let's get to it. So before we get to the show, let's cover the things that you need in order to make this work. First and foremost, you need a USB cable that can pass data, not a cable that you use to charge your smartphone. So make sure that you get one of those um, because I've seen this happen numerous times on the Facebook groups and user forums where people are very frustrated and then they change the cable and everything is fine. Second, you need to download three uh, items of software from the Newx website. You need the firmware, you need, uh, for the MG300 of course, you need the latest firmware, you need the ASIO driver if you're on Windows, and you need the Quicktone editor. Once you have these three software items, make sure that you install them, and then at that point, you can proceed forward, and we're going to start with the Quicktone editor. Okay, so with the Quicktone editor launched, what we want to do here is just go to the settings icon in the upper right corner to launch that window. And what we want to do is you want to make sure of a couple of things. First and foremost, we want to make sure that the recording and playback levels are nominal, so I would suggest keeping them at 0 dB. But secondarily, you want to make sure that the routing mode is set to normal. You don't need it set to reamp, you don't need it set to dry out, so just have it set to normal. Click OK, and now we're ready to go ahead and start up Reaper. Okay, so I've got uh, Reaper set up here, and I've launched it. now. Note that this video is not about how to use Reaper. This is more about just how to set up your MG300 as an audio interface. So if you're looking for more tutorials on Reaper, uh, YouTube should have a whole palette of them for you. Uh, but in this case here, what we want to do is we want to go to the upper right corner where it says 48K 24-bit wave. This is where you set up your audio preferences. If I click on this, currently right now, the audio device settings is set to uh, WDM, which is proprietary to Windows and it's also set to the Elgato uh, sound capture, which is not what I want to use. So what I want to do is I want to click on audio system and I want to select ASIO. And if you are using a Mac, you shouldn't have to worry about this because it should be class compliant. If you are in Windows though, this is why you wanted to download and install that ASIO driver that I mentioned earlier uh, at the beginning of this video. So once you've done that, you just want to make sure that you enable the inputs and the outputs we can also uncheck the request sampling rate because that's not really important at this point. And just want to make sure that your ins and outs are set appropriately. So remember that the MG300 is stereo in and stereo out. So you want that to be reflected here. Now what you also want to do is you want to click on that ASIO configuration and this will launch the Newx control panel. So again, this is why you download and install that uh, software that I mentioned beforehand. Uh, from here, you can set uh, if you go through the various pages here, you can set up and observe all of the different settings of the MG300. But most importantly, on the buffer window here, uh, you want to make sure that you set up the right amount of samples. And this will determine the latency between playing a note and hearing a note. So the lower that, but that sample setting is, the tighter your latency will be. Now it's not that necessary really to be as low as you need to be but you can get there if you want to. But remember that this is dependent upon your computer. So if your computer is slightly older, it may not work quite as well. So what I'd suggest doing is just starting with either 128 samples or 256 samples to get going. Uh, and once you do that, go ahead and close the window, click OK, and now you can see that the ASIO has all been set up here in the upper right corner where it says 48K 24-bit wave, two in, two out channels, uh, 128 samples, and that equates to five and a quarter point five milliseconds of latency, and we are in ASIO mode. So at this point now, I'm ready to go ahead and record my first track. Okay, uh, we've got Reaper loaded up here, and uh, I've got my guitar plugged in as well, and I can play it, and you can obviously hear it, but nothing's being recorded in Reaper yet. That's because we haven't uh, set up an audio track. So to do that, just go to the track pull-down menu and select insert new track 
or you can go anywhere within the track region here, right click and say insert track. Again, this is all very common uh, with all the different DAWs out there. So don't worry, you'll find that commonality. Now, uh, if I play again, not seeing anything yet here in the meters and that's because I haven't armed the track for recording. So you want to go to the track and there's, al there's always going to be a record arm track because you need to arm that track first. Now I've armed it, so if I turn up the uh, guitar again, Now, if you're listening, you can hear the latency, you can hear the delayed note. So you're not only hearing the note that's coming from the, um, the MG300 by itself natively, but what you're also hearing is you're hearing that signal going out through USB to the computer, being processed through Reaper, and then being sent back to the USB port there on the back. So you're hearing the delay between playing a note and hearing a note on top of the natural note. Um, and you don't want that specifically because it, it can be a little off-putting, especially when you're trying to play something to a metronome. So what I recommend doing is going over here and turning off the record monitoring. Again, you will find this on the DAW of your choice. And once you turn the guitar back up, you're all set to go. So at this point now, if I want to record something, um, I'll go ahead and just hit the record button here. Um, now, I would also recommend turning on a metronome if your DAW has one, which of course, you know, every DAW I've ever used does, but it just makes the process a little easier. So let's give it a shot. So after that's done, you can go ahead and disarm the track if you want to. Also, make sure you save your part. If we go back and also I'll turn the metronome off too. So go back and listen to it here. Not hearing anything yet, but here it comes. It's a very easy process and it just takes a little bit of practice. Now the waveform you're looking at here, this waveform is really a nice strong waveform. Obviously it could be a little louder if we want it to be, but just remember you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to digitally distort and, and clip because it sounds awful and you'll just be really unhappy with the results. So the goal here is just get a good strong signal and then the mixing process, the creating process, the mixing process, all of that will take care of itself over time. So that pretty much wraps up how you use the uh, MG300 and your favorite DAW to record into your computer. It's a very simple process and it just takes a little bit of practice to get it under your thumbs. But once you get there, you'll be making music before you know it. So I hope that this video helped you. If you have any questions, use the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I can. Thanks. Well, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, be sure to visit us at thepedalguide.com. But in the meantime, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for weekly videos and tutorials. Thanks for stopping by here at thepedalguide.com, where I love pedals and so do you.